I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Nancy Carmichael. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? I love that. You just brought back memories for me because when I was in Trinidad years ago, they would say good night. And being an American, I'm like, well, good night. That's what we say when we're leaving. But <laughs> good night really means good evening. So I love that. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, it's 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 like we were brought up where we needed to say that. You say good morning. You say good evening. You say good night. Yeah, good it's, night. Yeah, it's so important. Well, Nancy, please do tell us what part of the world are you in right now? I am just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oh, sweet, sweet. Well, do tell us which of your talents uh, that you've been operating in is responsible for us connecting at this time. Okay, well, I would have to say it's my blog and podcast, The Isle of Misfits, which is brought to you by my big mouth. So I pretty much... (laughs) I pretty much just love to talk and Uh, communicate in a variety of ways. uh, Love it. Love it. (laughs) I have a big mouth, too. (laughs) I speak a lot. Well, you have a lovely speaking voice, so yeah. that, that helps you, that serves you well. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So who did you learn the skill of um, the gift of the gab? Well, hmm, uh, you know what? I think I was probably wired to talk from an early age. It's it's kind of how I process things. Um, I, I, I listen, I think, by talking, which drives my husband crazy. Um, but as far as developing the skill, I guess I'd have to say it's just years of trial and error, and I'm still learning how to communicate well. Um, But one of the main lessons I'm learning is that less is more, right? Mm. The value of listening. And I've had some wonderful encouragers and mentors over the year Mm. who um, who I try to emulate their examples. That's great. That's great. Well, tell us about the podcast, please. Oh, gosh. Thank you for asking. Well, the podcast, again, is the Isle of Misfits. And really, it's just a call to all square pegs because everyone at one point or another feels like maybe they're not fitting in, whether it's um, you know, at the cafeteria table at lunch or at church or at work or, or whatever, just in our culture. And I want to encourage people to um, to discover who they are, to... Um, to just know that it, that the way they're wired is for a reason and to discover that purpose for their life. Hmm. Such fun, right? It's a lot of fun. I've already met some wonderful people. Um, you know, I, I get to speak with authors uh, and just amazing people that have amazing stories to tell and wisdom. And it's a, it's it, what's really incredible is how many people that you would think, oh, well, they're so accomplished or they're so put together. But you know what? They feel like misfits too um, yeah. because I think... I think that's something that we can all resonate with to an extent. Yeah, you're doing an amazing job. I got to listen to the interview with um, you and Ashley or Ashley Slater. Um, it was pretty intriguing, the conversation and just seeing things um, unearthed as you went on, just expressing the different ways people um, experience grief. All right. Uh, pretty oh, amazing yes. stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yes. She has a wonderful book that she just come out with about. Yeah. It's called Braving Sorrow Together. Yeah. You're doing an amazing amazing job well done well done thank you you're welcome well tell me one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years please honestly i think it's pray (laughs) i've always (laughs) believed in prayer but i would say the past three years in particular maybe even the past two years especially have been intense and it's put me in this wonderful awkward place where i'm just more aware of my utter dependence on god so Mm. Yeah, um, all those talking skills I mentioned before, lots of practice there. But again, I'm really learning to practice how to listen. Yeah, tell me how it makes you feel. Okay, well, I know I should say something like, oh, I feel centered and at peace with the world when I pray. But you know, sometimes sometimes it's awful <laughs> because <laughs> of the junk I have inside. And and sometimes, it's, you know, like I said, it's awkward because I don't know where to start. But I'll tell you what, Angel, there's this element of awesome, and I don't use that word lightly. It's it's a very overused word, but there is this element of awesome because something happens when I get past my own religious ideas of trying to sound holy or and just come to this place of raw honesty with God. I actually feel this sense of awe that it isn't just me anymore, that he's actually there and he's listening. Hmm. And it's it's overwhelming. 
why would you suggest to someone that's listening someone that may be on their end or may not even have a or an answer or a cry or a way to um, express what they are going through why would you suggest they do what you've done by praying i would say you know strip away all the religious crap i hope i can say that word on your podcast yeah, but, sure. you know, god, I know crap <laughs> <laughs> god wants our honesty and I, my the best times that i have in prayer are when i'm just just brutally honest and you know maybe i'm not supposed to stay there but it's a launching point and and i think god loves it when we're honest because then he can deal with us Mm, totally agree. Well, amazing audience, we are live with Nancy Carmichael. Definitely check her out. She has the Isles of Misfits podcast. Where would you want someone to connect with you online, Nancy? Oh, I would love to have visitors on the Isle so they can catch me at the Isle of Misfits. That's I-S-L-E of Misfits dot com. Wonderful. Well, Nancy, let's switch gears for a moment now and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Nancy, what is your earliest childhood memory? Okay, I would have to say I was three years old, birthday party. I remember I had three huge candles on my cake that, looking back, were probably tapered candles like you would put in candlesticks, which probably means my parents ran out of like birthday candles. <laughs> my, but my three-year-old mind did not know this. So you're three years old. Why do you think this memory is so clear? You know, I'm not sure. Maybe it was the huge candles. You know, it was, it was, I just knew they were huge. So turning three must have been a huge deal. Yeah. So there are the three candles there and you're looking at this and you pay no attention to that. You're more intrigued by the fact that there are candles and you need to blow this out. Perhaps. And you blew it out. You blew it out. I, do you remember that? No. I, you know what? I'm going to impose that memory. I think probably what helps is I know there's a photo that I have clear in my mind. I can see it now, which probably helped. But there's a lot of photos of me earlier that I don't remember either. So for some reason, I'm just saying those candles made an impact. Okay. Well, I have nothing on that, actually. <laughs> usually I say, <laughs> usually I'm like, you know, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture? I have one thing, but it's it's like almost nothing that just I'll pops out. It. You'll take it? All right. So my it. one thing is the fact that the number is three. And um, mm -hmm. that being an odd number, sometimes in life, um, the odd thing seems to be a misfit. And mm -hmm. the oh, fact that at that point in time, you uh, made the four of what is an even number um, to make sure that it isn't a misfit then. Um, so there are the three candles and then there's you, the light. You bring a light to other people that ensures that they do not feel like misfits. Oh, you are good. I'm okay. <laughs> 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 if we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? Okay, so it was 1980, which was a horrible year for music. So I'm going to say <laughs> probably something stupid like pop music by M. But I'm going to say 70s, golden decade, best music. So if I had to pick like my all-time favorite childhood song, it's going to be Summer Breeze by Seals and Crofts. Yeah, I love it. I love it. You know, it's, it's amazing how you could connect dots, right? So... Uh, you provided the summer breeze to out the candles, right? Like when you blew out those candles. Uh, yeah. Yes, I yeah. see what you're doing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It's all even now. All right. Well, Nancy, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. I'm okay. going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'll try to be brief. Nancy, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes, I think my daughter, hopefully. Are you married? I am. How many children do you have? Is it only your daughter? Just the one daughter, okay. yes. All right. Do you believe in God? I do. Do you have an inner circle of friends? I do. Most of them are long distance, but yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. How about three hours a week? Probably. What about screen time, the phone and or the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? To my chagrin, probably more than eight. All right, Nancy. After 1,001 conversations in three months in 2016, I came up with a workbook, the name of it being called Yours. It stands for your own unique real self. The idea is you answer some questions in there, hopefully get some reflection of yourself and then connect to your mission, which I term your own unique real statement. If you, Nancy, had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, what would you say that is? Okay, I'm going to say it's my byline for Isle of Misfits. It's own your awkward, love your fellow misfit, and embrace truth and beauty in the weirdness of life. 
Oh, there we go. Three again, right? Three again. <laughs> well, Nancy, this has been a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Oh, Angel, just thank you so much for having me. Um, I've enjoyed your podcast. I listened to you and what you're doing is wonderful. Thank you so much for this opportunity and uh, God bless you. Hey, you are welcome. God bless you as well. Nancy Carmichael, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Joe. Thank you for being on 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books. Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.